सिगरेट स्मोकिंग वी ऑल हैव कम अक्रॉस द स्लोगन्स लाइक सिगरेट स्मोकिंग इज इंजूरियस टू हेल्थ से नो टू स्मोकिंग स्मोकिंग इज चोकिंग एंड सो ऑन वी ऑल नो दैट सिगरेट स्मोकिंग कॉजस वराइटीज ऑफ अबनॉर्मैलिटीज एंड डिजीज इन आर रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम इन फैक्ट इट इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट रिस्क फैक्टर फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द क्रोनिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव पलमोनरी डिजीज दैट इज सी ओ पी डी we know that about 15 to 20% of the smokers they clinically develop copd pipe and cigar smokers also have the increased risk of copd but comparatively lower than with the cigarette smoking so the copd that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease mainly includes bronchitis and emphysema it also includes bronchial asthma and bronchiectasis I Dr K Kavya a homeopathic physician will be now explaining you the topic bronchitis and emphysema bronchial asthma and bronchiectasis are been previously explained in my previous videos so now let's understand what is bronchitis and emphysema bronchitis is a condition where there is excessive mucus production in the tracheobronchial tree which leads to the cough with the expectoration for at least 3 months of year for more than 2 consecutive years and emphysema can be described like it is mainly dealing with the air sacs or the alveoli there will be permanent destruction or the distension of the air sacs especially it is seen in the distal to the terminal bronchioles The main factors to cause this chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases includes the pollution, air pollution, that is indoor pollutions like burning mass fuels and coal, and outdoor pollutions like dust, smoke, fumes, or the occupational hazards. And it also includes the low socio-economic status or the patient presenting with previous uh, tuberculosis. or familial and genetic factors or having pre existing asthma the main factor to cause the copd is the cigarette smoking which causes bronchitis and the main risk factor for causing emphysema is the alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency i'll be explaining how this alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency leads to emphysema and all other risk factors leading to the bronchitis and emphysema that is copd also the patient having infections with rhinovirus or streptococcus pneumoniae haemophilus influenza can cause the exacerbation of the chronic bronchitis even exposure to the dampness or change of climates like fog and sudden change in the temperature can trigger the copd and when we see such conditions in children it will be mainly because of their low birth weight So now let's understand why this COPD and how this COPD sets in the body causing bronchitis and emphysema. So before going into the pathogenesis of COPD let's understand what is this alpha 1 antitrypsin. This alpha 1 antitrypsin is also known as alpha 1 protease inhibitor. because the normal function of the alpha 1 anti trypsin is to inhibit the proteases these proteases are the type of proteolytic enzymes proteolytic enzymes are nothing but uh, these are the enzymes which acts in the degeneration or the destruction of the protein or the normal healthy tissues so these proteases are the type of the proteolytic enzymes in the proteases mainly the elastases are released from the leukocytes mainly the neutrophils so that's why this alpha 1 anti trypsin is also known as alpha 1 protease inhibitor because its normal function of the alpha 1 anti trypsin is to inhibit these proteases that is uh, these enzymes which causes the destruction of the normal lung tissues or the parenchyma okay so 
when these proteases are released which is having the capacity to digest the lung parenchyma this action is inhibited by the alpha 1 antitrypsin so when there is a deficiency of alpha 1 antitrypsin due to the environmental factors like pollutions or repeated infections or in the persons having chronic habit of smoking or due to the gen- genetic predisposition when this deficiency sets that is alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency sets there will be increase of the proteolytic enzymes which has the capacity to destruct the lung parenchyma and also when there is environmental factors like pollutions uh, like uh, earlier i have said indoor pollutions or people who are exposed uh, due to the occupational hazards or having repeated infections or persons who are having the habit of smoking due to such environmental factors there will be free radicals which are produced in the lungs and also there will be inactivation of the anti proteases in the lungs as just now i said so due to these factors there will be lung inflammation in the respiratory system due to this lung inflammation there will be increased inflammatory cytokines and also increased oxidative stress inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 8 interleukin 1 beta interleukin 6 tnf alpha tgf beta etc due to the free radicals which are produced in the lungs there will be increase in the oxidative stress as i said once the proteolytic destruction of the lungs takes place and inactivation of the anti proteases in the lungs takes place there will be increase of the proteases that is uh, the enzymes which are having the capacity to destroy the lung tissues due to such lung inflammation which is continuous and repeated injuries taking place in the bronchial trees there will be infiltration of the inflammatory cells which leads to the airway narrowing and fibrosis due to such inf- uh, infiltration of these inflammatory cells there will be also proliferation of the goblet cells these goblet cells due to its proliferation and increase in the number there will be increased mucus production in the bronchioles and also there will be destruction of the ciliated epithelial cells due to the destruction and increased mucus productions the mucus gets trapped in the airways which becomes a site or a nidus for further infections to take place this causes the bronchitis as i said once the proteases starts to get increased and starts destroying the lung tissues the elasticity will be decreased the airway elasticity will be decreased which leads to the gas trapping that is the airs which are present in the alveoli it cannot pass out easily there will be trapping of air within the lungs and also there will be structural support will be decreased that is airway patency will be decreased which results in the narrowing of the bronchioles and leads to collapse due to the lung parenchyma destruction as the air sacs or the alveoli which are present they gets damaged that is the permanent enlargement of the air sacs leads to the hyperinflated lungs that is the lungs look like so bulky and hyperinflated and also the bulle that is uh bulle formation where the air gets easily trapped in it and those inflated bulle gets easily ruptured this leads to the emphysema in the bronchitis again it can be classified into two types acute bronchitis and chronic bronchitis acute bronchitis can be defined like person who is uh, having cough with or without sputum for a week or two weeks 
for a short duration. Chronic bronchitis can be defined as a person who is symptomatic with cough with excessive sputum for more than 3 months in a year. Again, emphysema can be classified based on the anatomical site that is pulmonary emphysema, mediastinal emphysema or subcutaneous emphysema. And based on the pathology, it can be centriacinar emphysema, panacinar emphysema and paraseptal emphysema. So, in the type of emphysema, according to the pattern involvement, first one, the centriacinar emphysema, here it is limited to the respiratory bronchioles and the alveoli. Here the destruction and the distension, uh, distension are seen limited only to the bronchioles and the alveoli. So SNI is nothing but the air sac or the alveoli. Here in the center SNI it is mainly we can see here in the uh, bronchioles. Then in pan SNI this is seen mainly in the alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency here the destruction is seen in the alveoli here the alveoli are completely destructed it is more prominent in the lower zones that is where the alveoli are present and centriacinars are mainly seen in the upper zones because it is mainly seen in the bronchioles and also sometimes in the alveoli also the third one is the paraseptal. Here the distensions or the destruction involves only the distal acinas. That is only the uh, uh, alveoli which are present in the distals. It is found near which is found near the pleura and may cause spontaneous pneumothorax. See how this pneumothorax uh, this is one of the complications of this COPD. So when the air which is trapped in the air sacs that is in the paraseptal uh, emphysema these air can escape into the pleura and cause the pneumothorax and fourth one is the irregular which is not much considered that is all the three types of the emphysema are mixed here Next is the major, major pathological changes which are seen in this uh, COPD is first one there will be uh, goblet cell hyperplasia. As I said once there is continuous and repeated injury to the bronchial tree there will be infiltration of the inflammatory cells and increase in the number of the goblet cells and there will be destruction of the ciliated epithelial cell. So this is how we can see here there is goblet cell hyperplasia and also the hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the mucus producing glands that is goblet cells and there is also reduction in the ciliated cells and mucosal edema can be seen here especially in the bronchioles uh, where the mucus plugs are formed and also and there is also increased in the smooth muscles due to the mucosal edema and the mucus plugs in the bronchioles there will be reduction in the caliber of the air passages these are the ma major pathological changes which are taking place in the COPD now let's quickly revise on emphysema and bronchitis so in a healthy lungs when we are exposed to the risk factors like environmental factors especially smoking the healthy alveoli uh, the harmful particles of the smoking especially the cigarette smoking gets trapped in the alveoli these harmful particles which are trapped in the alveoli which causes the inflammatory response that is the inflammatory responses in the lungs gets triggered this triggered inflammatory mediators leads the chemicals which dissolves the alveolar septum that is the bullet formation what I said that starts to appear these bullet formations are the or the large air cavity these gets lined up with the carbon dioxide which are trapped inside it as I said once these bullet formations are formed there will be gas trapping 
these gas trapping cannot send out the carbon dioxide so what happens they starts lining up in the alveoli which leads to the emphysema and in the bronchitis as i said due to the repeated and the continuous uh, in uh, damage to the bronchioles the inflammatory cells they start pr- producing the inflammatory mediators which leads to the continuous proliferation of the goblet cells and also the destruction of the ciliated uh, epithelial cells which leads to the increased mucus production and also uh, the airway narrowing this leads to the chronic bronchitis once copd sets in as we know there is a lung tissue damage due to the damage to the lung parenchyma the airway elasticity is reduced as i explained earlier in the pathogenesis once the airway elasticity reduces the capacity of the lung to push out the air reduces so what happens the patient takes long time for expiration to push out the air from the lungs so gradually it leads to the prolonged expiration here we can see the prolonged expiration as i said as the airway elasticity elasticity is decreased there is also the trapping of the air in the alveoli this air trapping to push out the air more effort is needed to empty the lungs that gradually leads to the dyspnea so air trapping in the lungs or in the alveoli also increases the lung volume that means the diaphragm is being flattened or the diaphragm is being contracted so diaphragm cannot flatten much for deep breathing as we know that to push out the air out the deep breathing has to take place so the diaphragm cannot flatten much for deep breathing so what happens the breath becomes rapid and shallow at that time so to breathe deeply the chest wall has to expand more so it has to expand more so what happens gradually the shape of the chest becomes barrel shaped so what happens in the end stages once the diaphragm will be flat due to the repeated pressure on it for the deep breathing once the diaphragm gets flattened the continuous inspiration will lead to the contracting diaphragm due to the continuous inspiration will lead to the contracting diaphragm that is the diaphragm will become flat so what happens due to this flattened diaphragm it pulls the lower chest inwards what happens it pulls the lower chest inwards so this is nothing but the hoer signs as you can see in this picture the lower chest wall is pulled inside hoer sign is nothing but the paradoxical shrinking of lower chest during inspiration as i said there is increased mucus production in the copd which leads to the decrease in the number of the ciliated epithelial cells these ciliated epithelial cells what actually will do it will clear the mucus which are present in the airways or in the bronchioles due to the increased mucus production through the goblet cells the ciliated cells gets destroyed and it leads to the chronic cough and sputum in the picture you can see how the chest shape is here the barrel chest shape next due to the obstruction in the air flow the obstruction can be due to lung tissue damage which occurs in the airways or also the obstruction in the air flow can be due to the increased mucus production so due to the increased mucus production what happens there will be decrease in the ventilation of the alveoli decrease in the ventilation that is nothing but there is increase in the oxygen in the blood due to the gas trapping what happens the air gets trapped in the alveoli itself and there is increase in the oxygen in the blood that is the more oxygen is been supplied in the exchange of the oxygen and carbon dioxide at that area the more of the oxygen is been put to the uh, is sent to the blood and carbon dioxide what happens it cannot go outside 
so it starts get to trapped in the walls of the alveoli so what happens in this condition due to the increased oxygen that is hypoxemia there will be decreased perfusion of the body tissues which leads to the fatigue and also when there is obstruction in the air flow due to the lung tissue damage in the airways so what happens during expiration the more pressure has to put that is positive pleural pressure that squeezing on the airways so that leads to the increased obstruction so what happens here the respiratory muscles has to work harder to breathe due to the increased positive pleural pressure which is squeezing the bronchioles what happens again there will be increase in the obstruction so for this the respiratory muscles the muscles which are present in the chest area has to work harder to breathe or to expirate so this leads to the dyspnea so due to the squeezing of the airways or the bronchioles there is a turbulent air flow in the airways which is heard on the auscultation that is nothing but the expiratory wheeze in the end stage in the chronic stages when patient tries to expire through the mouth forcing the airways to open wider as we know he cannot push out the air so he has to expire through the mouth so that uh, position or that way of respiration or inspiring and expiring is through the pursed lip breathing and once the patient becomes fatigue due to the increased oxygen in the blood that is chronic fatigue gradually it leads to the muscle wasting or the muscle weakness as we know that patient breathes through the mouth that is through pursed lip breathing he also uses his accessory muscles as well as with the diaphragm which has been flattened trying to improve his air flow so the position which he sits and respires that is nothing but the tripod sitting position as we can see in the picture and also the muscles which are present in the neck that is sternocleidomastoid and scalene muscles also they get contracted we can see all these findings when we are examining the patient of copd next in the clinical features of bronchitis there will be always a history present that is cuff with sputum productions for many years and late onset of breathlessness or dyspnea sometimes patient can also present with winter cuff or only the cuff in the morning time and smoker's cuff the sputum here are scanty mucoid usually the patient expectorate it mainly in the mornings and occasionally blood stained when he exerts so much pressure or occasionally it can be purulent the other symptoms can be with fever wheezing and chest tightness here the other uh, features like muscle uh, impaired systemic muscle functions anemia osteoporosis depression or increased risk of mi in the emphysema there is steadily progressive exertional breathlessness and there is only little cough and expectoration here the sputum will be scanty minimal and mucoid the other symptoms like weakness anorexia lethargy and weight loss are seen in the physical findings in the emphysema as i explained in the previous slide poor slip breathing that is prolonged expiration through the pursed lip and also the exaggerated tracheal descent during the inspiration that is campbell sign can be find in the emphysemic patient and also the shape of the chest looks like a barrel shaped next comes the investigation for bronchitis and emphysema mainly in the bronchitis patient in the chest x ray we can see there is a narrow cardiac shadow here we can see that there is a narrow cardiac shadow and no such other abnormalities we can see and on the electrocardiography may show some features of right atrial and right ventricular hypertrophy i'll be explaining this while explaining the complications of copd and in the pulmonary function test feve1 is decreased 
FBC is decreased and ratio of FEV1 to FVC is subnormal and PEF is increased, RV is increased and total lung capacity that is TLC is increased. In COPD patients, pulmonary function test plays a major role that is it also helps to differentiate the emphysemic and bronchitis patients and also the pulse oximetry and transcutaneous carbon dioxide monitor has to be done doppler echocardiography and right heart catheterization for the emphysema in the emphysemic patient mainly in the chest x-rays we can see here Bulle, that is the dilated air space in the lungs can be seen here with the hyperinflation of the lungs. In the picture itself you can see here the small wall of blebs can be seen and there is a vertical heart that is also called as tubular heart and the flattened diaphragm or the low set diaphragm can be seen here. Usually translucent lung fields are also seen and the ribs are placed widely and horizontal due to the barrel shape of the chest and tubular heart as I said and in the lateral view we can also see the large retrosternal translucency. In the pulmonary function test FEV1 is decreased, FVC is decreased and ratio of FEV1 to FVC is reduced, PEF is decreased and TLC is increased. So ratio of RV to TLC is also increased. DLCO that is carbon monoxide diffusing capacity is decreased in COPD patients but this DLCO is increased or is normal especially in the bronchial asthmatic patients. In the complications of COPD we all know that lung inflammation will lead to the increased mucus production and destruction of the ciliated epithelial cells where there will be trapping of the mucus which are produced in the airways which leads to the needles for the infection that is uh, leading to the pneumonia or the acute exacerbation of the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. Uh, the systemic inflammation in COPD is a hypermetabolic state which consumes the calories. So due to the excessive consumption of the calories it can lead to the macronutrient deficiency which further leads to the wasting and muscle atrophy. So what happens due to the chronic condition of the pulmonary diseases that is bronchitis or emphysema patient may go into the depression. Next when there is airway obstruction as we know there will be decreased air in the alveoli and the terminal bronchioles. So which leads to the hypoxic alveoli and also that leads to the vasoconstriction of the pulmonary arterioles. As I said, once there is a constriction of these pulmonary arterioles, that is which is present entirely through the lungs, so gradually there will be increased blood pressure in the lung vasculature. As we know that the pulmonary arterioles are directly related to the heart, lungs and heart are related to the pulmonary arteries so due to the hypoxic alveoli there will be constriction of these pulmonary arteries so due to the constriction of these pulmonary arteries there will be increased in the blood pressure in the lung vasculature because these pulmonary arteries are present throughout the lungs so that gradually leads to the pulmonary hypertension once this pulmonary hypertension sets in so there will be gradually uh, increased workload on the right ventricles so that is how the, the blood has to get pumped against the increased blood pressure so to compensate this increased workload so what happens there will be right ventricular hypertrophy but over time uh, the output decreases so that gradually leads to the core pulmonary that is right heart failure so once there is decreased air in the alveoli and the terminal bronchioles so what happens there will be decreased oxygen in the blood which is passing through lungs so once the oxygen is decreased which is passing through the lungs there will be chronic hypoxemia so what happens due to this chronic hypoxemia uh, the body identifies and the kidney starts to increase its function that is kidney compensates by increasing the erythropoietin production 
due to this increased erythropoietin there is increased hemoglobin and rbc synthesis which again leads to the secondary polycythemia as we all know that in copd there will be rupture or the destruction of the bullae that is air sacs so what happens the inhaled air also gets leaked into the pleural cavity causing pneumothorax the other complications can also be like mucopurulent relapses or carbon dioxide narcosis or respiratory failure or the pulmonary bullae respiratory failure as i said and also it can lead to the weight loss and right heart failure what is this blue bloaters and pink puffers these blue bloaters are nothing but there is a marked cyanosis that is blue and peripheral edema that is bloated are dominant in the bronchitis chronic bronchitis so these patients usually are known as blue bloaters and pink puffers are nothing but usually there is a marked dyspnea that is puffer and there is no such cyanosis seen hence that is pink color but there will be progressively dyspnea so uh, usually seen in the emphysemic patients so they are known as pink puffers so now how can we differentiate the emphysema and chronic bronchitis patient usually the dyspnea will be severe in the emphysema patient and it will be mild in bronchitis as i said in the clinical features cough starts after dyspnea in emphysema and cough starts before dyspnea in the chronic bronchitis sputum will be scanty in emphysema and it will be copious and purulent in bronchitis patients mucopurulent relapses this is one of the complications of copd but this is less frequent in emphysema and is more frequent in the chronic bronchitis patient as i said blue bloaters are the bronchitis patient due to the cyanosis which is present in the bronchitis and mainly absent in the emphysemic patients and pulmonary hypertension is seen late in the emphysema and it is seen in the early stages in the bronchitis so pulmonary hypertension is seen early and severe in chronic bronchitis as i said here the cough and mucus productions are more in bronchitis so what happens uh, there will be less oxygen or less air in the alveoli so due to which the pressure or the vasoconstriction occurs early in the chronic bronchitis patient in the pulmonary arteries so these pulmonary arteries are spread across the lung vasculature so what happens gradually there will be increased blood pressure in the pulmonary arteries so hence in chronic bronchitis we can see this stage or the complications early whereas in emphysema the air gets trapped in the alveoli but what happens gradually the these alveoli are surrounded or uh, by the carbon dioxide due to the inability of the air to pass out that is to expirate completely so what happens this pulmonary hypertension sets lately and in investigation that is hemocrate Uh, there will be increased values in the chronic bronchitis patient and partial pressure, pressure of oxygen is low in chronic bronchitis and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high in chronic bronchitis patient and diffusing capacity as i said that is reduced in emphysema and it is normal in the chronic bronchitis patient and in the chest x ray we can clearly see that there is hyperinflation and bullae and tubular heart in the emphysemic patient and there is increased bronchovascular markings and cardiomegaly in the chronic bronchitis patient in the management part the regular exercises and good nutritious food has to be taken by the patient the patient who are obese weight loss has to be done and physiotherapy aids for the relaxation of the cervical muscles especially in the chronic patients and also for the symptomatic patients they can take the homeopathic medicines to control this chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases few homeopathic medicines which are indicated for bronchitis are aconite napellus ammonium carb antimyor antimtart brioni alba carbovesh ferampos epicac kali bicromicum phosphorus pulsatilla and so on for emphysema antimtart aspidosperma brioni alba coca senega etc 
but always remember homeopathic medicines are to be taken only after consulting the proper homeopathic physician self homeopathic medications could be harmful hope this video was helpful do like comment and share and follow kk homeo hub for more such informations thank you